Good morning, everybody. Do you think about your money much, particularly the bills in your wallet, or maybe interest rates, or inflation? Well, the Federal Reserve has something to do with all of those, and it was established on this date in 1913, when President Wilson signed the legislation. There's just something about real gold and silver to give the idea of value. I think we'd all agree with that. But what about paper money? Well, here's a shilling, a paper shilling from New Jersey when we were still part of the British Empire. And here's a $20 Continental. These were the bills printed during the Revolution, and they were pretty much worthless by the time the Revolution was finished because of inflation. After independence, each state had its own money for a while. This is a 20 from Massachusetts, and that didn't really work very well. So in the late 1700s, the first bank of the United States was chartered for 20 years, and one of its biggest problems at first was, what do we do with all the foreign currency in North America? Particularly this one, the Spanish dollar or the piece of eight. This was in circulation all over uh, North America. And here's a theory where the dollar sign comes from, the two pillars of the Spanish king, surrounded by a ribbon with the motto of Spain. Now, not everybody agrees with that, but just something to think about. Well, the War of 1812 came and revealed that we were not ready for a major economic event like war. So soon after the war, the second bank of the United States was chartered. And this lasted until the 1830s when it was dissolved more or less by President Jackson. When the Civil War came, the North printed greenbacks. And here's a $5 greenback. They weren't backed by gold or silver. Their value rose and fell as the war went up or down for the North. The South also printed paper money, and it was worthless when the Civil War was finished. The Gilded Age refers to the years after the Civil War up to about 1900, and this is a time period when our country becomes very industrial. All kinds of uh, big businesses are setting up. And the government, the laws, the structure was just not set up for it. And in this cartoon, you see the trusts and the monopolies basically controlling Congress. So Congress was behind in terms of how do you deal with a modern industrial economy. There were booms and busts that happened regularly. And one of the most severe happened in 1907 when the stock market crashed, businesses closed, and the government just didn't have the toolbox to deal with it. So what finally solved it was when a bunch of Wall Street uh, wealthy types like J.P. Morgan and other bankers figured out some kind of system to calm the markets down. But when this was finish, finished, people said, you know, we can't rely on private people to solve national problems. So this is the map of the 12 districts of the Federal Reserve, known as the Fed, came into existence on this date in 1913. And each of the districts has a standalone bank. They act as sort of safety valve for other banks in the region. This is the bank in Boston, which is Fed district number one. But Congress also told the Fed to concern itself with economic things like interest rates or money supply. You think of the mortgage rate that you have when you buy your house. Well, that's related to what the Fed does. The Fed also keeps an eye on inflation, and this is partly because the 1800s had some terrible inflation. And this surprises people. The Fed also is charged with doing what it can to keep employment up. And this, again, is because the 1800s saw times of great unemployment. Now, the silver certificate reminds us that sometimes you could swap money for silver. This was created in the 1870s. We don't do that anymore. And if you look at the top of this note, it says Federal Reserve Note. And the letter L is there, the number 12, because L is the 12th letter of the alphabet. So this is from District 12 of the Federal Reserve. So our money reminds us of that system. So the next time you're at the store and you give somebody some cash and they take it and you think, why is this even worth anything? Well, it's partly because 
of the Fed.